Hello guys and welcome to episode 88 of the 10 minute modeling challenge or should I just say it the modeling challenge nowadays uh, maybe this will evolve into a new series who knows because the last two videos that I released the well that I made was the cyberpunk room and also the lighthouse in the night both of those videos broke the 10 minute mark by far like 90 minutes more like and uh, it's been uh, quite positive in the comments. I've had a lot of good uh, wording about those, so I'm going to stick to that theme a little bit longer and see what happens. I'll stick to the format where I'll do like a 10 minute in intro build with a timer and see what I can achieve, and then I'll just spend uh, whatever time it takes to build on that. And this week I'm actually going to revisit a little bit of an older theme that I had, uh, which was uh, I created a tree, a low poly tree a while back. And uh, now it's actually for a reason, because I got contacted by a, a guy named Mike in the deep wilderness of northern Canada in British Columbia. And uh, him and his, I think it's wife or partner, girlfriend, I don't know, <laughs> I'll have to find out. But uh, I think Mike and Yuvi, and their names are, and they run a podcast, a tech podcast from, uh, it's been running since 2013. And it's about uh, high tech stuff and innovation and, I don't know, entrepreneurs and uh, cryptocurrency and funding and environment and you name it, a lot of stuff. And they've actually funded this cool project uh, for a smart village. So they bought like a 400 acre plot of land and that's gonna be the site for this new smart village that's gonna evolve over the coming few years. And to fund this, they actually did this something uh, called, um, I don't know if any of you guys have heard it, but it's something called NFTs, non-fungible tokens. And it's a funky name and basically it's like a, a digital property that only one person can own at any given time which is a little bit strange considering that like you can just copy files left and right so it might get your uh, might be a little bit difficult for your head to wrap around that one how can someone own like a digital property but it's actually uh, a token that's generated and it's uh, stored on a blockchain so if you've heard of like bitcoin or ethereum and things like that and the proof of ownership lays so within that blockchain i'm not going to pretend like i know the details about this because that it's a learning curve for me too but the thing is that you can sell those NFTs and they actually use that method to fund uh, purchasing this property of theirs. And I'm going to help them out to create a lot of trees for the next phase of this project. It's going to be super exciting. So I need to figure out a way to generate about 10,000 unique trees in the first batch. And modeling them by hand is not going to work. That's a, a definite no-no because uh, I think I calculated that it'd take about 6,000 hours or something to model uh, the amount of trees manually and make them unique. So it's not going to happen. So I'm looking into a few different options and uh, it's gonna have to be procedurally generated in one way or another. And I'm either gonna procedurally generate them in Blender or uh, maybe I'll write a little application to do that for us in uh, Unity. <laughs> or I could also uh, see what the interest is like in the community. Maybe uh, I should, uh, for a change, uh, drop my drop my load. That sounds strange. Uh, drop my workload and uh, get some help from the outside. I'm not sure yet. So it's gonna be a fun journey to check this out. But I'm gonna be filling you in a little bit more about this in future videos as well, because I'm gonna revisit this topic and find a cool way to generate these trees. There's also a composer named Daniel who's uh, hooked up to this project and he's gonna be composing music for these NFT trees. And we're gonna create some anim maybe slight animations and, and get some cool digital properties there that could be sold and help fund this village. Uh, Daniel is uh, English based in Hollywood at the moment, working on some uh, TV series and I think, uh, been working a bit with Hans Zimmer, which is actually my fa all-time favorite uh, composer when it comes to music. Uh, at least it was. <laughs> In the first 10 minutes now, which is going to be the time-limited part, uh, I'm going to model the base of the tree or the trunk and the main branches. And then in the bonus material, I'm going to spend some time to use probably the hair modifier this time or the hair particle system and uh, model some leaves and see if I can get some nice branches coming out of those. Earlier in the week, I actually played around a little bit with uh, the geo nodes or the geometry nodes, and uh, I didn't really get the result that I was hoping from those. Uh, maybe it just uh, needs to practice a little bit more, but it's, it feels like the hair modifier or the hair particle system would offer a lot more in terms of dynamics and the geographic nodes, to my knowledge, doesn't have any collision detection, so you could get branches that are overlapping, whereas the hair uh, modifier or the hair particle system just get it right. Hair particle system gets it right. So in 10 minutes, let's um, build a base tree model and uh, also like a little patch of uh, like a mini full floating island for it to stand on or just a patch of mud. I put some roots there as well. Enough talking. Let's start. Ready? Steady? Go! And we're off. Woohoo! Yes! Okay, I'm gonna start by tab into edit mode, control R, loop cut, control R, loop cut, and then uh, let's Alt and Shift select those, and I'm gonna do Scale, Shift Z, and then I'm just manually gonna turn that into a cylindrical shape. Maybe I should make this 
brownish straight away, so it looks like a tree right away. Now, I want to keep the manual approach for this to get my stylistic approach. Um, stylistic approach. A lot of approaches here. Sounds like an aircraft carrier. Uh, let's see. Rotate. E to extrude. S to scale. Rotate. Uh, rotate the viewport. E to extrude. S to scale. I know you can control right click as well. And that's one way to do it a little bit faster. I feel like sometimes it's a little bit less controlled than manually R-ing to rotate and things. But let's, let's uh, start like this. Okay, and here I'm going to separate this now. E to extrude. S to scale. And another favorite thing of mine here is to do where I shift or I select these faces now. And then we go to the loop tools here and do circle. And then you can actually change the influence there, not to make it like a perfect circle if you want. Scale it down a bit. And then G to move it. And E to extrude. S to scale. Rotate. And let's go with the control right click as well, for those of you who prefer that method. And rotate a little bit. Rotate. It's the rotation that I don't really like when I do control right click because it, it leaves the rotation wrong. So that's why I prefer to do R to rotate sometimes. All right, let's get another branch coming off here. So we'll do circle, scale it down, G to move it, and E to extrude. I want to put the br main branches here on the top, just like this. I might do the base a little bit wider as well. I want to create a stylistic tree here. That's my purpose, or my purpose in life. It's not, it's my purpose for this video. Okay, so here, circle, scale, E to extrude. Okay, hard to rotate apparently. And E to extrude, S to scale. And this is going to look like a windmill uh, soon. So let's uh, put some more interesting shapes. E to extrude, S to scale. E to extrude. Here I'm going to actually do E to extrude. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> I'm not. Nobody's surprised. 80, 80 episodes of extruding. And you keep coming back. Very strange, but I'm happy. So E to extrude, S to scale. E to extrude. R to rotate. I'm going to get the branches to come up a little bit. So we get the main part of the tree pointing upwards towards the sky. The leaves want to grow up, or the branches want to grow up, unless they break off and fall down. Okay, I forgot to do circle there first. Again, you can change the influence a bit, not to make it a perfect circle. Okay. And this needs to go forward. And we'll put some uh, branches off it. Oh like smaller ones and leaves and stuff in the bonus material this time. So there's not going to be, it's going to have the low poly aesthetics uh, style, but I'm not going to go for a, like a low poly all in uh, poly count look, because uh, let's check what the poly count is at the end, if I remember to do that in the end. Ah. Okay, so we need to make it a little bit more interesting still. I've got uh, six minutes and 42 seconds to go. Right before I do like the branch off, I like to do E to extrude. <laughs> Just a little bit like this, so I get this part so I can do the circle and this uh, loop tools modifier is actually included with the blender by default you just have to enable it so a few things like that like the auto mirror as well very useful but not enabled by default so go and enable those do yourself a favor control r and press control r and here let's put another branch maybe I'll do that one actually and circle g e to extrude I know you can do like uh, I, I've done the skin modifier and stuff like that to, to do the trees before, but I actually like having control of the topology on these trees, because if, if we're going to subdivide it, God forbid, you're not allowed to subdivide low poly stuff. But if we were to do that, then uh, it's really good to have control of your own topology here. And I think I'm keeping pretty good at quad topology. So I think, yeah, that's pretty good. And this is one big thing there. Control R. Let's do one uh, branch that got cut off here. I think I did that. Probably for my old trees as well, though. Circle, I like that. And then if it goes uh, rotated like that, just rotate it back into place. And E to extrude, S to scale, G to move, or G to grab. E to extrude, R to rotate, S to scale. And we're going to put some roots on as well. We're going to spend five minutes just on this tree now. So E to extrude, there, we can do I'm like a bit brighter like that. Okay, let's put some roots on here now as well. And same thing here. Oop, nearly deleted a face there. Circle, rotate, E to extrude. I'm going to try to get the roots a little bit more interesting. So it just, uh, again, we have the stylistic control over this now. So 
and this wouldn't be viable for the procedural trees but I'd have to model a whole bunch of base assets for different tree uh, species and tree types and then basically you need maybe uh, like hundreds maybe a hundred different variations or something and then the, th the trick is to ramble ram <laughs> ramble <laughs> I'm pretty good at that to randomly assemble them into one single uh, tree at a time and then export them batch like so we get the variation that we need and randomize different properties all of, all the time so you get these unique trees digital properties to own the trees are actually going to be uh, the nft trees that we're making they're uh, going to be actually representing possibly real trees on this uh, 400 acre plot in uh, british columbia i don't know why i keep saying that i could just say canada uh, so this is a, one of the big things that's making this project a little bit different. It's that it's not just the digital item. It's actually linked them to maybe a tree or a, something access maybe to this plot of land for the people that holds the ownership of these NFTs. They can actually maybe it's not decided yet, but could be uh, like it grants you access to this property and you claim the rights to be there for a particular set of time. Or it could be loads of different cool things. So. Okay, I'm realizing that I just made it again look like a windmill as I was trying to talk and model at the same time. So let's uh, put O, let's press O for proportional, scroll wheel up, and then let's put a little bit more like stylistic design into this. Thicker trunk here. There we go. And here we've got, uh, I don't know what type of... Uh, tree I had to research trees a little bit more as well the type of trees that grow and how to make them visually appealing we've got two minutes 43 maybe it's like some layers of uh, it's had a struggle oh actually it looks like it's had a healthy growth here in the beginning so okay let's get some more roots off here as well control R control R circle Rotate, okay, proportional off now because I need to rotate this into place. E to extrude, R to rotate, control right click, remember that's how you can extrude too. Here, if you like control right clicking. And here we should bring these further down as well into the ground. So, in case uh, the little mound of dirt that we're going to put here doesn't cover it, we'll get these. Maybe we'll, should we get another one off here? Just for some reason, I mean, a uh, tree uh, uh, not branching tree uh, rooting mode here maybe this one can go up a little bit that would be so strange e to extrude s to scale <clears throat> like a thing that comes like out of the ground maybe it was a rock here that was removed e to extrude s to scale rotate i've got one minute to go now just right click E to extrude, S to scale, R to rotate. I'm actually going to texture paint this, I think, for a change as well. So I like this uh, method of uh, doing the low poly modeling like this. And uh, the colorization. Oh, yeah, I forgot to extend this branch. Okay, E to extrude. Uh, but I'm going to texture paint this one for some different character. 50, 50 what? 54 seconds. Okay, let's get let's get circular E to extrude. Circular saw came to mind. Probably need a chainsaw to cut them down though. But leave them up maybe. Uh, e to extrude S to scale. So again in the ten minutes we'll do the base model. I think I wanna again I wanna try to make it a little bit since I had the stylistic control, I should uh, make use of that. Uh, so, just a lot of right clicking or Eing. E to extrude S to scale. 12 seconds to go. Cue terrifying music, but there's not a terrifying thing to be watching because <laughs> it's not really that stressful. I can't really fail because I could be finished at any time. That's it. Uh, feels like I've, uh, I'm like in retirement mode here. I've calmed down now. The stress is gone, but. Maybe I'll throw some stressful music in there. Anyway, so here's like our base tree model then that we're going to be working off. I'll save this one first of all. 
10 MMC app 88 tree. And uh, let's move into the chilled out bonus section of this video now. So the stressful 10 minutes are over. We can kick back, relax, have a cup of coffee that I prepared and uh, cool down. And first of all, let's put a little dirt mount for this to reside on. So we'll do tab out of edit mode, shift A. We'll always start with a cube. That's the thing. Scale. Okay, tab into edit mode because I don't want to scale the actual object. I just want to scale the mesh inside of it. Bring it down to there. And that's going to be uh, <laughs> a decent size. We'll press control. Maybe that's way too. I, I, know, I know it's uh, illegal to subdivide, but I'm going to subdivide a little bit. And I'm even going to sculpt this one, I think. So we'll do control A to apply that on. Tab into edit mode scale it up maybe like this and now let's head into sculpting mode and we'll just slap on dino topology and i don't have a pen on this computer i've got a pen upstairs that my wife is uh, using but i still have yet to try to learn that one so i'm just going to use very basic uh, icon sculpt so especially if you want to get depressed and then motivated watch yon sculpts super cool guy super skilled amazingly talented when it comes to sculpting and then you can come back to this video and see my sculpting of this dirt mound and then you feel happy about yourself again. <laughs> so, uh, we, we can't all be uh, great at everything, so... Uh, but let's just make something here. Let's pretend that there's like a, a ledge here, sculpt up to there. I'll just fill in so like it makes a little bit sense with the roots here, maybe. And then, if you hold control, it like depresses. <laughs> depresses you? No, it depresses the surface here. And if you don't press control, it doesn't depress it. So let's just do this. Create some like ridges here as if the dirt's been falling off. We can render this in Blender. Remember, I render in Blender because remem remember you can render in Blender. Tongue twister. And I've uh, got my scene uh, from uh, last week that we're going to be using. So we can just utilize that one. I'll just do some dirt here. Uh, the lights were already set up from the, uh, from the, whew, can't even speak, from the lighthouse model. So we'll reuse that one. Okay, and I'm going to decimate this one because I want to go back to the low poly look. So maybe something like this. I don't know. This too? It could. Okay. That's it. I say, and then I keep tweaking a little bit, but that really is it now. So I'm going to decimate this one now. So I'll go uh, back to my control tab, object mode, and then we'll go modifiers, add modifier, decimate, and ratio down this thing. Head back into low poly territory where we feel comfortable, at least I do. And then go into UV editing. Okay, we need to apply this one. There we go. Tab into edit mode, G, okay, I have to UV reset, A, scale zero on the left here and get the UVs up to here. Should it be dark dirt? Yeah. Okay. I have to assign the material. And I know, because someone told me in the comments that I could just go here instead. Go. Chiching. There we go. And if we need to tweak this, the roots here are going up a little bit, maybe too much. So I'll still just do some manual tweaking. O for proportional, G to move it up. And that one, I think I'll move up to there. And here as well. A bit too much stuff going in the air. I like like the odd root maybe to go in the air like that one. But the rest should probably be t heading towards the ground. Okay. That's it. We could disable specularity here. Maybe it'll be less shiny, easier to see. <clears throat> and I think I'm going to do this dirt even darker. So we get the distinction there. So what should we do next? I think the first thing I'm going to do is uh, try to render this thing because we've got this scene set up here. And remember, it's the lighting now from the last week. So it's going to be the night lights, but I'll just keep those on for now. Uh, F12. So look. And that's our stylized tree here now with the, the root system, some branches. 
and let's rename this one tree f2 i click on this one and dirt mound and i think i'm gonna duplicate this one actually and save it and we'll call this one original and then we'll hide that one and i might even sculpt this one to do the same just to get some more details on it now if i were to subdivide it it looks like that and that's too round too perfect to everything but what i'll do is i'll do that first i think and let's apply this one if i could okay i subdivided everything now i just want to do that one control two apply the subdivision go into sculpting and then see if we can do something to the tree we need to do the dino topo on this one too dino topo and then we can retexture it I'm actually going to paint the texture on it anyway after, so let's add some detail here. Control, remember, takes away. Uh, and then I'm going to follow like where the roots come out as if it's thicker here. And then here I'll carve with control as if this root is taking control of things. Looks like a octopus, no? <laughs> Strange octopus, like it's probably dead then. And that's it. And like oh a bit strong there maybe and here maybe we can do some feature here some growth feature it, like was the branch there that rotted off hate when that happens and it's like a twisty thing now here let's put some maybe i'll do a little bit less strength there a bit too strong okay that's too weak and here we can again i have no idea about the anatomy of trees and how they grow, but I'll pretend that they grow like this. So notches and stuff like the Minecraft uh, guy. I've uh, got the same surname as uh, the founder of or the inventor of Minecraft, Marcus Passion, and uh, nicknamed Notch. And my name is Stefan Passion, so same surname, but it's a very common surname here in Sweden. So there's no relation there. Whoa. Okay, that is some serious strength there. I'll have to really tone that down. Okay, that's super strong still. Okay, let's not touch that branch then. Okay, this, this is where my inexperience shows now how terrible I am at this, but hey, we've got to learn all of this. There we go. Again, just to get some... I know I could probably change the top topology details, I see. Yeah. Don't, don't want to go this detail, but we're going to subdivide it, remember. And we could probably take the opportunity too now to make it the branches a little bit more interesting. So that's going to be the base shape and we're going to decimate it in a second, but I think I want to tab into edit mode and G with proportional and then just get this shape a little bit different again. A bit more majestic, if that's even a word. Get some growth twists here. So here's a low poly video with like millions of polygons probably already. Okay. Should that do? That for do. That'll do for our purpose. I think I want to extend these even further though. Because how did I get back into sculpting? UV editing. I was all always there. I think I want to bring these out even further actually. They're a bit too too tight. It should be grander. So proportional, pretty good here. That better? I think so. And we've lost a lot of the UV stuff now, but uh, first of all, I'll decimate it. Add modifier, decimate, and bring this down, the ratio. What happened there? Okay, decimated it to oblivion. Let's not decimate it that much, but I'll go back to this. State. I really want to have the low poly look. 
a little bit more. Like that. Okay, and then we'll apply this one. So much for non-destructive editing. This looks like a big giant like landing platform, so we kind of have it like that. We're going to tighten this up a little bit. Same here. That's it. And we've lost the Yumi now, so now is probably a good time to save Control S. And let's create a new material for this one then. I'll go into shading. Let's create a new one. I could probably do that from here, I guess. I'm not so good with materials here, so. But I think I can uh, create a new one, can't I? See, I don't even know how to create a new material. So don't feel sorry if you don't know where things are. I've been using Blender for ages, still don't even know how to create a new material. I know how to copy a material. Let's rename this one first of all. Um, gradient. Okay, let's copy it then. Shall I? Oh, there. I thought it was copying. So it just creates a new one with the old base, I guess. Uh, sorry about that. So let's call this one tree. And I'm going to get rid of the emission on this one. Get rid of the opacity. Specular I'll bring up a little bit. Emission string. It must be possible to create a blank, surely. Put in the comments, how do you create a blank new texture or material? Ridiculous that I don't even know that. And here I'm going to create a new texture probably. So let's go on. Let's delete this one. Right shift A. Texture. Image texture. And we'll create new here. I'll call that one tree. Tree base. And we'll make it brown, I guess. If that's even possible. Hook that one up. Did I create it? No. New. Tree base. Sounds like free base. Okay, free base, tree base. There you go. Okay. I have to click OK as well. Go back into UV editing and should be able to get the new texture up if I select this one here. Should I not? To bring this up a little bit. Maybe we should change this one so we can actually see what's going on here. Okay. And now I'm going to go into texture paint. So again, I have to make sure this texture is selected, tree is selected, and UV editing, control tab, texture paint. Something weird is happening here. Oh yeah, I need to unwrap it again. So A, UV, unwrap, or no, smart UV project. That's it. So that's unwrapped it. Now we need to change to the tree base here. That works. Yeah, so I can paint on this one. And okay, for the painting part, I'm probably going to switch. I'll go to face and uh, shade smooth this time. So we get uh, still the low poly look, but a little bit smoother faces there. So I'll just paint uh, a few colors here, I think, for the tree. And I'm, I'm no texture painter, so bear with me on this one. I'd be scared if I was a bear with me. Bear left like the GPS says, keep looking left, telling the kids, but never a bear there. Let's see. So I'm just going to do like something super simple here, because when we render it with the darkness and the moonlight, you're not going to see this too de detailed. So, And I've got some issues there with leaking, but it doesn't matter. So apparently this is becoming an orange tree. So I'm going to paint. I'm just following like the shape of the tree, tree the way it's grown, and I'll make this one a little bit smaller. And again, I don't have a pen here, but I think most of you who's watching this probably don't have a pen either. So even if I made a tutorial where I had a pen, maybe it wouldn't apply to a lot of you, or maybe you do all have pens. 
Should run a poll. How many people have a pen? A lot of peas there. Okay, so super. I'm gonna blend this, so don't panic too much. I know this looks hideous, probably, and it might even look worse when I'm done with it, to be honest. But again, we're building uh, people's uh, confidence here. So if you know how to paint better than this, good for you. <laughs> okay, so that could be something. And we've got an orange tree here. A dead orange tree. And by orange tree, I don't mean that it grows oranges. I just means it looks orange. We can fix this. And then that's some highlights or something. So we can do uh, go darker as well. Medieval. Medieval times. So I'll go like with a dark color. Maybe I'll just reduce the strength. A bit. And then paint in some areas here. Okay, let's, I need to go stronger. Okay, apparently I need an even darker color. That's it. So, here maybe. And I'm just following the... It's nearly like, like an ambient, manual ambient occlusion thing I think I'm doing. <laughs> so maybe it's a bit too strong now. And we'll blend this now in, in a second too. I'm not going to bother too much up here by the branches, I don't think. And then I spend time on the branches here. So, tell a lie again. Okay, control S to save. And I've learned by uh, painful experience that you need to save these images. Because... I was playing around with texturing before, which I haven't done very often, and suddenly Blender just decided to clear my texture, save myself some space and time. But it didn't save myself time because I, it just deleted my textures. I don't know if you manually have to, to delete them like that. Or add them, I mean. Okay, so maybe I should go some, look, a little smaller here as well. You can press S to pick a color as well. It's like a color picker. So you can, you can even pick the gray here. So I add a little bit more detail. Maybe I'll go small brush, S to pick a color, and then put, oh, that's strong. And we'll blend this in a second now. So it's like the bark has been growing somehow. It probably does grow. <laughs> Not just somehow, it just grows. Okay, could that be it? That could be something. We should test render this as well with the dark. Put a little bit more here. And then we'll blend this in a second. Here, here feels like, uh, feels like I'm like doing clothes now with some creases here. <laughs> Not clothes. And there. You could probably spend ages. Probably the more time you spend on this, the worse it is. At least in my case, a bit of case, a case of the like oh, you overdid it type of thing. Okay, let's uh, test render F12. Okay, it's actually looking super strange, and that's because I'm rendering with the old model here, so I have to take that little. Uh, and it's still probably going to look very strange here. Still looks very orange, so we'll have to fix this now. And I think I want to bring up the specularity even more and down with the roughness. Let's try that. And now let's blur this texture out then. UV editing or texture painting. Why did I do that in the UV editing mode? I don't know. So now I'll get the smear brush and We'll start smearing this. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Probably way more smeared than <laughs> it would be in real life. 
I'm gonna go back to the... I mean, people are gonna hate me for this, probably, most likely, more than usual. And I'm gonna go back to non-shade, uh, smooth shading, because I really like that low poly look. And you probably, if you look at this series, it may not come to a, a, a surprise to you that I prefer the low poly look. Again, it's to hide my, my uh, inability to do it properly. So. And here, I think I should do like a light color in here. Right. Oh no, S to sample. Strength. There. And I. No, oh, keep pressing I because that's in different programs. So it's I to do that. Smear this, erase the mistakes. Now I'm going to go back to face and shade flat and then F12. And it's too bright so I want to darken it, the whole image. I wonder if I can do that in here. Should be able to go maybe here. Paint, massive brush, instead of mix. Can we do uh, color burn? You could, but that was a bit strong. Probably better ways to do that. That was not so good because I just want to darken the bright part there. I'm just going to bring it into Photoshop instead. It work probably a little bit faster here. And then we'll see hue, saturation, bring down the lightness, desaturate it a bit. There we go. Control S to save it. Hopefully it should uh, reload this one now. That's it. It's a bit better. F12, a little bit less orange at least. So that's more the look that I wanted, I think. And did I not go back to face flat? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's because I was in there. Okay, now we're gonna put some uh, leaves and branches on this tree, I think. We've got the base uh, shape of the tree that I wanted. And to save some time, I'm gonna just copy uh, like uh, some branches from here, I think. And uh, if I'm gonna do it later on, some more detailed work, I'll probably like do a lot more variations. But just for the sake of this video, I'll spare you the time. <laughs> so right, control right, right click to just select that. Shift D to duplicate it, and G to move it. And here I'm just gonna go to like one on the numpad front view and align it up like this, and then three on the numpad and R to rotate, so I get it to point upwards like this. Alt-Z to s disable see-through, and then here, Alt-Z again to see-through. <laughs> and here I'm just gonna do, I think, let's see if I can see roughly where the cut is. Or I can do this. And I Alt, let's see, I Alt-select this edge here, and then when I look from the front view, scale Z, and then I bring that down. You can even type zero like this then it brings the base down like that. And this one's like escaped a little bit, so we can manually tweak this one probably. And I've got proportional on, I'm noticing. But that should do. 
And here I'll do F to like cap that on control T to triangulate it. And that's going to be, I think I'll do E to extrude S to scale too, just to get this one. And then we'll make sure that the pivot point of this one is actually down here. So I can do, let's see if I can do that. What's happened here? Oh yeah, it doesn't really matter. The texture is like dragged out and stuff, but that's okay. It's not gonna see like this is inside here anyway. To get the pivot point to a good place, one way to do it. Okay, we're missing a face here. F. Hopefully I'm not missing more faces. There is one that's missing. How come they're missing? Okay, that one wasn't missing. So one way to get the pivot point in a decent place, Alt Z to see through, one to go to vertex, control right click those. So we've got like a medium point there, shift S cursor to select it. And that brings the cursor back into a pretty good place for this branch. We can even do A to select everything. Okay, L to select everything, G to move it down to here. That's it. <clears throat> and before, I don't want to change the pivot point of this tree, so I need to separate this one now. I'll do L to mark the link here, P, separate by selection. And this is going to be our branch now, so maybe we should even rename it branch. And again, to save time, I think I'm just going to do one branch for this video. But imagine you could do this uh, process a few times to do multiple branches. So this one is going to be a little bit skinnier and narrower. So I'll do period here and do pivot point is going to be the cursor for a while. Scale Z just to drag it out to there. Scale to scale it down and then proportional on period again and do medium point and now up with a proportional and I think I'll just do something like this so we've got a branch of some sort and I'm not gonna extrude anymore let's just keep the branch like that for now I think a scale okay scale Z and scale it down a bit thinner like this and we can control the scale anyway when we use the hair modifier to distribute these and did I actually set the pivot point for this one? No, I didn't. So that was a bit stupid of me. Let's do it again. Alt Z, Control right click, Shift S, cursor to selected, tab, right click, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. And now we've got this one. I think when I use the hair modifier, I think it's meant to be pointing towards the Z direction here up, if I'm not mistaken. So that's gonna be the branch. And maybe we can even start, let's move that one up here for now. And now I'll add here, First of all, we'll do add a modifier and we'll add the particle system and go to this tab, switch it to hair. That's one hairy tree. And then down here somewhere, render. Instead of path, we'll do object and then we'll pick that branch object. And <laughs> not quite what we wanted just yet. First of all, let's bring the number down. So we've got a lot fewer branches so we can see what's actually happening. And then we need to scale the branches up like that. And this uh, has some issues. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Can we do dynamics? Yeah, then it at least points in the right way. But we don't want branches to grow all over the tree. And to fix that, we can actually go tab into edit mode, go to this vertex one, vertex group, add a vertex group, and then we'll do control tab and go weight paint. And while we're in here, actually, I should probably disable this altogether. There, so we can actually see what we're doing. And we'll bring the, okay, weight up, but the radius down. And then I can start painting where I paint this, uh, this group now, the weight. That's where we want the, the stuff to grow. So I'll just paint at the tips of these. You could even have a dead branch if you wanted to. Like when you do in development, Git repository with dead branches probably more common in tree with dead branches to be honest <laughs> so but we want we don't want to grow like too many stuff from in here so maybe like this I don't know I rarely do <laughs> just uh, go by it's funny when we're developing uh, line war this uh, RTS game and it's so funny because me and my uh, partner who's uh, developing the game. We're so different when it comes to how we approach things. I'm like a learn by trying and I, I need to just fiddle around with stuff and see if I can get it to work. Otherwise I don't understand. And he's the total opposite. He uh, needs to uh, 
read it through, like, from start to finish of a page and a book and a tutorial or something. Uh, probably, like, the actual documentation from the product. And then he can just make it correct from the beginning. And uh, it's quite cool that we're so different and we get to compliment each other. Not, like, give each other compliments. Well, we do that sometimes, too. <laughs> Super strange. It's like, oh, that's really good. Well, I guess. Okay, we don't really want to grow under there. To be honest, we should probably not... Let's see. I don't really want them to grow underneath there, maybe. Okay, weight, zero, strength. That's what I want them. Actually, avoid them from growing underneath here. Usually, you want the branches to grow upwards, so maybe like that. Could do. Let's try it. A lot of time just weight painting there. So control, okay, control tab, go back into object mode. And now let's go back to this uh, data particle system, enable it. And then we need to tell this particle system where that it's supposed to listen. The density should be based on the group. That failed miserably. I thought I did paint it, didn't I? Control tab. Weight paint. Okay. It just needed some time to wake up. Looks like antlers. <laughs> okay, control tab, object mode. And... If I press space, since I've enabled dynamics, the branches will actually arrange themselves a little bit using that dynamics. In the beginning, it looks a bit funky because the needs to settle. So there we go. And then we'll just find a... It'd be fun to do maybe an animation in the future or something with uh, like turbulence or wind and things, but I won't have time to do it for this one. So that's uh, that one. Now we need to make, maybe it's some randomization maybe to the rotations and stuff here. So we can do somewhere, probably. Air dynamics. No. Oh, advanced. It's an advanced feature to rotate something. I do that all the time in Blender. R to rotate. This one is advanced for hair. It's not really that advanced, but okay. So we need to get back on track here now. Space and rotate it. Okay. Again, I have no idea what I'm doing here really. But we can do scale randomness a bit. Scale it up. Still too many branches probably. Space to animate it. Let the branches settle in. Okay, and this is why you should have a collection of branches instead as well. Uh, because again, I'm using just the same single branch for this video. That's why. But we, we should make it smaller probably. So scale, bring those down. Like that. Okay, there's probably some logic to this. There's loads of properties as well that you can change when it comes to hair dynamics. I have to learn these uh, at some point so I understand what I'm doing. Uh, like weights and stiffness and there's probably loads of cool things that you can do with it. But let's uh, keep it like that for now. Let's do a render here to see what it looks like. Animation, bring it to here. F12. At least we've added uh, some of the main branches now. And then now let's do some, see if we can do some leaves as well on this thing. And to do the leaves, I think I'll just do again, maybe should I do something up here? Shift right click, shift A, add a cube. We always love cubes. A scale, and on this one, I'm gonna switch the material. Control S to save. And, oh yeah, that one's already saved. So, this one, we should switch the material here to our uh, simple uh, color one here. So we'll do the gradient one. Eight. And then here, 
to get the gradient back here, you need to go shading, I think, anyway. Select that texture. And go back. At least that's what I thought. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Okay. <clears throat> I have to switch it here, then. And we'll go back to the... This one. No. <clears throat> this one. Scale. Zero. G. And bring that to there. And this is going to be our leaf. So. O proportional off a scale. Y. That's Y. Control R. Scale X. Control R. Scale X. And then. Actually, what we could do is just E to extrude, control R, mouse wheel up the scale, scale X. <laughs> okay, so this is, uh, again, I have no idea what type of tree this would be. I should probably base it on some real leaf, but let's do O instead, proportional, and then just create something that could look like a leaf. Makes me want to buy leaf blower for some odd reason. Oh yeah, probably because the neighbor's got loads of leaves falling down in our garden. <laughs> okay. And it's coming to autumn now, actually. It's quite nice. I like autumn because uh, less sun glare in the, on the, in the monitor and you get less bad conscious for being inside when the weather starts to go worse. So maybe these leaves are a bit thick, but we'll have to live with that. So that's going to be like a base leaf then. Very big. I should very big. Let's bring it down to there. And here, we should be able to do the same now. I want to have the leaf a little bit away from the center, so they come off the. You don't want. Here we go. Starting loads of sentences again. You don't really want like a leaf growing straight off from a branch like this. You want it to come off on a mini twig type of uh, branch thing. So, I'll do the same thing here now, like we did with the other one. I'll go to this mod, like here. Whoop there. Let's add a particle system. Go to the particle system. Hair. We know this now. This is Unix. I know this. No, nope. I don't even know it's, that's how she said it, but first, uh, Jurassic Park, 1993, I think. So, did I get sidetracked again? Object, pick object to instance, and this is exactly how you don't want the leaves to grow on a tree. Nearly looks like moss. So scale it up. And then should we do advanced again? Because a rotation is an advanced feature, remember? And again, this is not what we want it to be. But now you can edit this on the fly, which is pretty cool. So as you edit this one, like the object, I'm just going tab into edit mode on the leaf here and then G to move it. Then you can like see how far away you want it from the center there. And we don't want these hanging in midair, so we're going to fix that too. But And what I'll do now is I'll switch off the particle system, tab, and then we'll do the same thing here uh, with the weight painting. So we'll go to vertex here, add a vertex group, control tab, weight paint. And here, we, where do we want the leaves to come off? Okay, weight up. So we want them to grow from the tips here, like that, and from here <clears throat> there, but we don't really want it to grow from the base here at all so that's okay maybe like this that could work control tab go back to object mode switch back the particle system and then now we have to go to the particle system properties Control S to save density group. And now they're growing a little bit more where we wanted them. Looks way, way too uniform now. So we'll have to, first of all, we'll reduce the number here of uh, leaves. Maybe like this. And then I'm going to modify this object now. So I'm going to rename this one from cube. Sorry, I'm going to have to rename it to leaf or leaves. This is going to be more than one. And they actually look way too thick, literally. So I'll have to scale Y and flatten those. 
And now we can start by playing to do in this object now, tabbed into edit mode. This is not a tutorial, by the way, but you can follow along if you want. Shift D to duplicate it, rotate, and then suddenly we've got another leaf here. And before I do this, I want to make this one a little bit bigger so I can like do mini branches coming off here. So I'm going to do G, G, just so I get can grab these faces a little bit easier. L to select the links, and then here we'll just do some different ways this could look. So I'm just doing Shift D to duplicate, rotate, Shift D, rotate, and rotate, Shift D. I don't know how many we should make. The more, the merrier. Um, oh, I duplicated just uh, a little on there. So maybe this could be like a de decent thing. Shift D, duplicate. All right. I don't know. <laughs> Probably not so good. Never mind. We'll do uh, O here, proportional, and then make them a little bit different. All the leaves there, oh, or O for proportional. Z because I don't know what I'm doing. G to move. Change the wheel of influence. And here, G. G. Scale. Scale. G. 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 I guess we could make them slightly different. Oh, 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 oh. Makes me think of uh, one of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy movie, uh, books. It wasn't the first one, I think it was the third one or something, where they sent like the spaceship full of people to a planet to populate, to save humanity. And they didn't bring any money because money was a bad thing. And then when they landed on the planet, people didn't know what to do. And they figured, the first thing they figured out, I think, I might be telling this totally wrong, but it was that they needed some sort of money, but there was no money machines. So how could they solve things? And the, they actually picked leaves as being money then. And everyone suddenly became millionaires because there were so many leaves anywhere. So to solve that problem, I think they just put like DDT or some toxic to kill all the leaves to so make fewer leaves in that world. So it sounds like something humans would do. I'm probably way off the way I told that one, but it's the gist of it, I think. <laughs> sounds like humans. Okay, so we've got some variations to the leaves. Actually, they look pretty much exactly the same. I should have done more variations. Smaller. L. Bigger. G. Like, f super weird. Okay. That's a bit... Maybe not so good, but that's okay. But they're all flying in the air still. So now comes the thing here where I was going to select all of these. If I can. Shift, select, shift, select, shift, select. Shift select, shift select. We have to check the poly count on this thing after. And here, I'm just going to do Alt E to extrude long face normals, and then S to scale them, and G to bring them down. And this is not going to look so good, but we'll have to live with it. Alt E, extrude long face normals, and then O proportional off, I think. Scale, G, scale it down. I don't really want to scale them. I just want to bring them closer, actually. That was my idea. This looks super stupid. Uh, plus, it's uh, the wrong color. But okay, let's do this anyway. They can't be green, so I'll make them like brown of some sort. That looks a bit better, but super stupid. Why would a leaf grow right outside on that twig? It makes no sense at all. Control minus. Let's keep it. Let's keep going with it. You live and learn. E to extreme. Oh, okay. Alt E, extra long face normals, scale, scale. Okay, now maybe I can scale these up again. So period, individual origins. Can I scale these up again? Yeah. And then control plus scale. I, this is no. This is not a good approach. Find a different way to do it. 
Okay, proportional back on G. Okay, so it's not a tutorial, but for the sake of this tutorial, let's do it like this. Rotate G. Oh. So I'll have to look at some trees <laughs> to see how the leaf goes, because that looks super stupid. But let's just keep it for now. Uh, should I do it? They should have been the, as thin as I had them before, I think. Alt Z, see through, box select, three to face select, control plus a few times, like that. Alt Z, and then period, individual origins, scale. Is that better? Alt S to scale, okay, that worked. So we'll just do them. In, okay, control minus again, alt S, which is like a normal scaling, but it's not normal, it's just scales along the normals. Alt S, tiny bit, like that. Just didn't want it to be that thing. Okay, do you know what? We're gonna have to live with that. That's uh, what we could do is probably bring some of these leaves closer. So if I do control plus a few times there. And now I can probably do O. Proportional was already on G. And rotate G. L. Okay, this is a fantasy tree, I've just decided. So this is apparently how the leaves grow on this one. Let's pretend that didn't happen. And let's see, let's play around with the numbers here instead. Fewer, bigger. Where's the scale? There. More, oh, we could do that rotation thing here, couldn't we as well? That was, uh, should we do dynamics here as well? Probably not. Where's the rotation there? Okay. Scale down. Okay, that could nearly pass for a tree. It looks very strange that a leaf would grow at the very tip I guess that could be fixed by doing it like this. L. Oh no, I've broken that thing. It's linked with this one. Well, actually, you can do L, but then here, instead of seam, you do uh, UVs. Then it actually just selects the green part there. Pretty handy. Uh, Shift D to duplicate. Scale, rotate. And Shift D, rotate. Does this look more like a real tree? Probably not. But let's go with it. So, I'm gonna do a lot of research for um, making these trees, by the way. So they actually turn out good in the end for this project. Uh, so again, check out futurethinkers.org to find out more about this uh, Smart Village project and the NFT project. You could become a, a owner of a property here. This sounds like an advert, and I guess it nearly is, but I'm actually part of this project myself. Or at least I think I am. We haven't really decided out the details, but we're playing around with the idea anyway to see where this leads us. So it sounded like a really cool thing to be a part of, and I need to learn a lot more about NFTs, how they work. And I don't know if... Uh, I missed the train on the cryptocurrency a little bit. I got Bitcoin a little bit too late. So it should make use out of that. Uh, when an opportunity comes along to learn a little bit more about stuff like this, I want to be a part of it. Rotate. It makes me want to do some Infensia NFTs too, just for the fun of it. Rotate. I'm starving as well. If you're watching this on the premiere, thanks for joining the premieres. Been a little bit up and down with the viewer count, but I'm so happy that I see a lot of familiar faces there. 
I don't see them, but I see you guys in the chat. So I'm really thankful. I'm closing in on 200,000 subscribers too, which is super exciting because when we hit 100,000 subscribers, I say we, but when the channel did, then you're a big part of that one. Then uh, I did a 24 hour live stream. So we're getting close now to 200 and I'm going to do that again. I said to myself, I wasn't actually going to do another live stream like that because it's quite tiring to do 24 hours straight. But then I don't know, you easily forget. So I decided to go for it again. Okay, I'm uh, not going to do much more than that. That's going to be the branch now. And it's just going to have to be like this. Maybe I can bring this one in a little bit. I think maybe that would be better. Yeah. I guess I could. Can you on the fly here? Maybe I can just extrude something here. Surely. E to extrude. I just want to see if this works. E to extrude. That's the scale. Nope. Let's forget that ever happened. So we've got our leaves here and we've got the branch. Now we're going to attach the branches down to here because this doesn't automatically update, I don't think. If I press F12 to render, we still don't have the leaves. And I don't think it does recursive uh, hair simulations. Apparently, it's not so common that hair grows, grows off hair. So we'll have to probably bake this one. So branch, shift D, duplicate it. Let's call that on original org. Hide it from the renderer and there as well. And then now I think there's like a way to bake this somehow. Dynamics, blah, blah, blah. Is it here? Convert. It's, I think it's converted this into a whole bunch of objects now. So we'll select all of them. Select this one last and then control J and that merges it down to that one. And now again, it's like way too many uh, leaves. <laughs> it's one healthy tree anyway. Every single leaf is like in perfect mint condition. Control 12. No, just F12. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, that makes uh, gives me an idea that you should actually be able to play with some translucency on uh, the leaves to get like the light shining through that would be pretty cool I think so you get that uh, like backlit leaf uh, effect so I think we've got too many leaves here for the sake of this <laughs> so someone said low poly right and that I'd never go away from it yeah it's uh, the low poly look anyway so okay let's uh, see what we can do So first of all, it's too many branches, I guess. So we'll go back to this one, number, fewer, and then I guess we'll do larger. Space to get this to settle in. Animation, let's bring it here. Okay, it's still way too many. Okay, that's no good. So what should we do to fix this then? Even fewer. And it's growing uh, too much down here, I think. Okay, we need to do a longer simulation, I think, because it's not having enough time to settle. I don't know if there's better ways to do this. Settle down. Okay, it's... I think I need to change the rotation of this thing. There. Oh, that looks a bit better. This is growing down. I don't know. I'll, okay, maybe I can uh, weight paint this thing again then and try to get rid of uh, so it doesn't grow from the underneath here. So we should go to Control Tab. Oh, Control S first. Save Control Tab. Texture, no, weight paint. Okay, I need to disable this so I see what, what I'm doing here. Hide that one. Tab. And I don't want to have anything growing from under here. I don't know if this is going to work. I guess it should be a way to align it so that it, uh, it always grows up. I think there's probably hair stuff to, like in, in the hair settings to do that. But that maybe that will work. 
Okay, what am I doing here? Tab. Okay. That branch is growing super strange from behind. Let's go back. Nearly looks like wind there. But it will settle, unfortunately, in the end, so... Okay, could it be that the pivot point is wrong on that one? Let's check out our pivot point. No, it looks pretty good. So it shouldn't really fall down to underneath there. Maybe we'll just... Do a quick and dirty fix to get the visuals. All right, we'll change the random seed. There we go. Go back. Let's try that. F12 render. So again, this is just the same branch now with the same leaf configuration. That's why it probably looks very uniformed. So imagine if you modeled uh, like 10, 20, 100 tree trunks in different shapes and variations, and then you did uh, the same amount of uh, branches and a whole bunch of different leaves. You could have dead leaves, dead branches. You could have uh, all sorts of weird things. And then we uh, get it to assemble it. Maybe Python script this thing to have it assemble loads of trees. I'm not sure if that's going to work. And, and spit them out into files. Again, I need to figure out a way now to generate a whole bunch of these trees. I think I'm going to change the camera angle a little bit so we actually get that viewport because you don't really you just see the like the leaves there. So maybe I'll do G to bring that down, and then R to rotate. Should we come a little bit across here maybe? Let's see a good angle. We could rotate the whole tree as well actually. Rotate, or the whole thing. Rotate Z. Oh, interesting. When I rotate the tree, it actually affects the air modifier. That was uh, unexpected. At least for me. Rotate. I know there's better ways to position a camera as well. <laughs> Guess I'm just too stupid or lazy or both to do it the right way. Maybe like that. Let's try that. F12. And we can try, try some different render settings too, I guess. So we could... Oh, I'm tempted to like put a little campfire there. Maybe a little low-poly character sitting there playing a... What should he be playing? Harmonica? No. Guitar? No. Accordion? No. Hmm. Give me an idea of what type of instrument he could be playing by a little campfire and if there was a guy sitting here. And then trees, uh, the wind blowing in the trees here, like uh, maybe a little bird's nest. And what else could you put in the tree? Maybe a noose? <laughs> no, probably not. Okay, and you could have the roots coming through the bays and stuff. You could do all sorts of cool things here. Let's boost, the, let's play around a little bit with the lighting. I don't know how much have I recorded. We're already one hour and 23 minutes in. I'm not going to fast forward any parts of this because some of you actually wanted me to not fast forward stuff. So let's just keep it real. Keep it real time. But for the rendering, I'll try to boost... Uh, I do have an HDRI setup here. So for the world here, what does it look like if we boost that one to one? I still have the blue moonlight there. Lighting it up. So... That could work. Again, too perfect all the leaf colors and stuff. Variations would be needed. I guess we could... Could we do some simple color variation here? Oh, I've actually merged it to this. This is baked into an object now, so I can't really quickly change that, unfortunately. But some variations of those leaves would have been uh, probably beneficial to do. And 
should we try playing around with these lights a little bit too? Strength. Okay, I want to get this side light here. I should have... This is the blue light. Let's boost that one to like 20. F12. I like the blue light actually gives it a little bit character, even if it's like a daylit thing. But I think the HDR is too bright, so let's go down with that one. 0 0.5 maybe. Interesting. Let's go back to 0 0.1. And that we increased that blue light a lot. Oh, it's like uh, the moonlight. I, I like the dark ones for some reason, where it's just like a strong... And I'm fascinated by the blue light for some reason. Stylized, it looks like uh, it's shining in the evening. If I were to put that campfire there, and that little guy playing whatever instrument he was going to play, play, then um, I think that could work. Maybe get some volumetrics in if I could learn that. I have no idea how to do that. Maybe some randomizations on the branches then, so they're not like, like that. Could work. Should we have, uh, maybe I'll duplicate this light. Because in the other scene, I actually had three lights lighting up the lighthouse. And in this one, I had the start scene where there's only one light. So let's put another, like, backlight here. Where was the camera? There. I'm actually going to backlight it here. And let's do F12. So it shines through. Again, you probably... Oh, I think if you add translucency to the leaves now, it could really make a cool effect that it's actually like lighting through the leaves. But I think uh, if I change that now, I think it'll change the branches or this one too. But I can try, I guess. Let's try it just for fun. Control S to save. So I guess I can change it for this whole material now. Because I'm only using that as far as I know on the... On here, right? This one's not using. What material is that using? Okay, so I'll have to pick this object up here. And then let's try transmission here. F12. I don't know if this is going to work. It making any difference? Yep, I think so. Can't remember what the last one looked like. But it looks like it's shining through the leaves a little bit now. Yeah, for sure. So where there's denser now, it's not shining through, but that was way too much probably. Or the light maybe from the back is too strong. That didn't work. So what happens if I change this one? To not be so strong and i might put another light here again for from the last scene i had uh, like a pink light coming from this side as if the sun was setting let's try that but i'm gonna put that on one strength and then go back here i think the translucency was too strong as well so let's go or transmission I don't even know if I'm maybe up with the roughness. I have no idea how these work. So many things to learn. Okay, now we've got that purple sunset light as well. Or that could be the light from like a campfire later on when I put that on there. I'm going to try out uh, Blender 3.0 and also that K-Cycles, which is a paid renderer. It wasn't too expensive and I believe it cuts the rendering time in half from cycles X, and I believe it cuts it three times, cuts it three times faster. <laughs> and it's three times faster if you do uh, compared to this uh, cycles render. So I'm gonna try that one. Okay, I think uh, I'm gonna leave it like that for now. I liked uh, that little purple light there and the blue light there. I don't know about the translucency or transmission. I keep saying translucency. There's probably such a thing that I should really understand how it works because I think it could look pretty cool.
But that's going to be it for this episode. And um, I hope uh, I hope to learn a little bit more about this whole generation, the procedural tree generation. So I'm leaning towards so far that blender with a bunch of randomized objects or like branches and bases and leaves and things. And then I'm still leaning towards the hair modifier to create those uh, variations rather than uh, the, uh, what's it called? Geographic nodes. No, not geographic. Geometry nodes. <laughs> uh, I'm still not very comfortable with those and it seems quite primitive and limited from what I've seen. You can like scatter a bunch of objects similar to like a particle field or on surfaces like the hair modifier, but all of those other features, especially the collision collider, I like this fact that it could sort of straighten the branches out without too much overlapping. Whereas that seems to be very difficult to do in uh, geometry nodes. My backup plan, if uh, this doesn't work altogether, it could be that I'm going to bring the objects possibly into Unity because the end trees might be rendered using like a Unity engine anyway. And if that works, then I could do condition detection when I place all the branches and stuff. But so far, I think if I could script this, get this to work and work off a bunch of collections, it would be a super cool way to start generating these trees. So again, thanks a lot for joining uh, this week. Check out futurethinkers.org and uh, check out that podcast. I'm actually going to start listening to it a bit myself. It was just Mike called me uh, when I was on my holiday and he left a, a message on my Swedish answering machine. So he didn't really know who he was calling and I didn't even know who it was that was calling. But we made a connection there and it sounded interesting, this whole NFT project. So check out futurethinkers.org and check out uh, the Smart Village project and uh, follow along on some of the episodes. I'm still going to be doing all my normal Infancia stuff. I'm still developing Line War and I'm still freelancing as a developer. So <laughs> I don't know how time is going to work, but I'll figure it out somehow. Always works out in the end. So give it a thumbs up if you like this video, if you like this tree, if you like the leaves. And before you leave, also uh, subscribe if you haven't already, because we're trying to make that 200k mark and we're going to make uh, a cool 24 hour live stream with only some t minor little uh, technical breaks basically where i have to yeah yeah go somewhere anyway i've already said all this i'll see you next week bye for now